five, four, three, two, one. The Sofa Club is live. My mind. I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mean to. doing in my room. Are you going to hurt me? Help! This is 12 Temperance Drive, right? I'm Henry Cleaver. Do you know me? Why is that on my wall? Do you know him? A uh, daily. I'm a fan of his swimming. Daily? I've never seen anything like him. Wow. 2016. Y yeah. October the 11th, 2016. Seriously? Because I'm not joking, in the closet it's 1986.
stinks in here, Ben. What's up with you? What's that you've seen a ghost? Hello? Why can't she see you? Oh, my God. I've got a brain tumour. What are you on about now? Those, um, swimming trunks are very tight, aren't they? What? Larry's got this calendar at work. August's my favourite. <laughs> Not like him. I didn't say you were. But if you were, or not, I mean, either way, um, you know, it's really important to use protection. I mean, I don't have anything against any of it, but, you know, AIDS and all that other stuff, I, I, I just want you to be safe because, you know, girls can get it too. AIDS? Like my mum was telling me about this. It, gays are, are dropping like flies. And Larry at work, his, his ex has just been diagnosed with HIV and, you know, it's, that's it for life now. It's pills and pills and people talk about it like it's a thing of the past, but it's not. And I just want you to be so careful. You know, people, um, people need to wrap it up. It's not exactly an urgent worry. And syphilis, don't even get me started on syphilis. Like I say, protection, protection, protection. Mum, just stop! All right, chill your beans. Open a window, will you? And, and take that plate downstairs, it's growing mould on it. You're going to get ill. Hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. Why couldn't she see me? I've thought about it too. Lewis and Paul at school, they keep calling me faggot. They wrote it on my wall 73 times. You dead faggot. Again and again. No way. They wrote on the wall of your house. It's like a, a profile wall thing, a, a social media thing on the iPad. You can talk to each other instantly. Like a, a walkie-talkie, but you write it. Weird. Do they still have nets? You know, like at Nintendo. I, I, I want one so bad. Sort of. It's all pff, PlayStations and Xbox now. What's that? I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. My brain's totally mashed. So they wrote on your wall instant light thing. Yeah. You spread round the school that. I watched them in the showers after football. <laughs> they put pictures of me on Instagram. They cut my head out and put it on men having sex. Hey. Hey, it's OK. You wear makeup. Why do you think that's weird? No, it's, it's like a thing for that now, like a, a drag race thing on TV. For real? It, be, because I, I love it, performing. You know, like Cher and Bette Midler. Wait, they're, they're not dead now, are they? I don't think so. Cher's a robot now. <laughs> my mum my keeps calling me a pervert. She thinks I'm mentally ill. 
Which would explain why I'm sitting in a closet with someone in 2016, wouldn't it? You're not a pervert. Let's take a look at this. This is my favourite show on TV. This guy here, he's going out with this guy and they're getting married and everything. And then there's this guy and he's trying to break them up, but it's just non-stop drama. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I'm staying here and I'm marrying that stud daily. Your mum had, 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 had a right old perm when she came in at that calendar. My mum would have just burnt it. You know, you should just tell her what's going on at school. No way. And she'd just go in and make it worse. How could it be worse than hiding away in here? Who did this to you? Tell me what happened. I met a boy, and he was just like me. He, he was a pervert, Mum, only he wasn't there. Just leave it. Tell me the names. I was in a land where gays can get married and dress up on TV. You need to let me help you stop this. It's not right. You're not right. Ben, talk to me. I'm always here for you, and I always will be. Go on. Kick me out. I waited to miss the bus. I do that every day and I walk to school because I'm terrified, Mum. This time they knew what I was doing and what they were waiting for me. Smash all my records! Break all my things! Smack it out of me! And they punched me. They spat on me. And they kicked me screaming, faggot. I didn't want you to be worried. I am not going to let them get away with this. I'll go straight to the head. We'll move schools, whatever it takes. One day. I'll be dressed up on a stage, and I'll be proud. You'll see. And guess what? I'm gay. What difference will that make at a new school? You are not gay! We're just different. What about AIDS? I'm not gonna get AIDS, Mum. Protection, protection, protection. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that, I just... It's just the shock of just hearing it out loud. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm listening to everything. And you know what I feel? I feel love. If you are like you are, you must so. And it's okay. It's not okay.
goes clunk 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 Get a little ambulance, please. Ambulance, ambulance, ambulance. ambulance. Ben, 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 come on, sweetheart. Come on, come on. Get it all up. Get it all up. Come on, Ben. Come on, ben. Don't know what's happened, but it seems to be taking an overdose of something. I don't know what it is. What it is. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit it out. No, no, no. Somebody's looking after him now. I don't know. Somebody, somebody's here looking after him. We're trying to make him sit. Make him sit. That's it. Get it all up. Come on, darling. Come on, sweetheart. You'll be fine. You're gonna be fine, darling. You're gonna be fine. Come on. Ben, 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 sweetheart. Ben, get it all up, love. Get it all up. Come on. Come on. Get it all up, Ben. Get it all up. Get it all up. Come on, darling. Come on, darling. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. Come on. How did you know? It's so lucky to have you. Who are you? Tell him. Just tell him it's going to be all right now. No more need for closets. First, yeah. And uh, good evening. You've just been watching Closets. Um, I don't know. I've seen it so many times, and every time I see it, I see something different. Um, it's a fantastic film. Anyway, my name's Berwin Rowlands. I'm uh, involved with the Iris Prize LGBT Film Festival, and we award the world's largest short film prize. Um, but you're not here to listen to me. Um, speak. You're here to listen to me chat to two amazing guests. They are the Anton Deck of the gay LGBT film world. Um, I, it's, it's Neil and Lloyd, or Lloyd and Neil. I can never tell 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 you apart, to be honest. Um, I think that's the problem when when you're two very attractive specimens of manhood. But anyway, it's a Neil and, and a Lloyd, and a Lloyd and a Neil. Um, Peccadillo <laughs> did actually promised me some name badges, so I, I do apologise if, if I get your names mixed up. Um, before I ask you to say anything, uh, this pandemic stuff, this COVID-19, um, I, I was explaining to some friends that I was going to be doing this, and um, and they told me to have a look at TikTok. Now, the TikTok was totally... I, I hadn't seen TikTok until last week, so... Um, I'm now inundated with images of animals, um, lots of people recovering and coming out. So I've been crying my eyes out for the past week. But there's also a lot of gays on mine for some reason. Um, lots and lots of gays and gay couples. And um, and they do this thing. It's similar to Mr. and Mrs. Oh, I've just realised that places me in a certain age bracket. But it's kind of like... A, do you know more about each other? So I thought, 
Um, as you are a couple and a we're gorgeous not, couple. We're not, we're not, just going to just clarify that we're not a couple. We're not a couple. <laughs> you're, you're not a couple. No. Well, nobody mentioned that to me. Um, <laughs> so what, what am I? What am I going to do about my top ticks? Well, we can I go, yeah. Shall we just go through them anyway? Uh, knowing you, Berwin, um, I'm sure it's extremely professional. So let's go for it. <laughs> professional, yeah, lovely. Okay. Um, so, do you know how TikTok or TikToks this this thing works? I, I know how Mr. and Mrs. work. Okay. So, so I, I, I'll I'll throw something at you. Well, towards Manchester, and then you've got to say it's him or it's him. So you can either tilt your head towards the person that the statement is more relevant to. Okay. Mm. Are you are we ready? We're ready. Okay. Who is the funny one? Okay, so that's Neil or Lloyd, <laughs> depending on which one is which. Um, who has the sweet tooth? Oh. That's Neil. I do know who you are, by the way. Yeah. Um, who's, and I know the answer to the next one as well, who's the biggest flirt? Oh. Um, who, I think I might know the answer to this one as well. Who's the last one standing? I'm alive. Ah. Okay. Um, who's more likely to get into trouble? Yeah. <laughs> um, who likes musicals? Okay, I mean, that, like that's that. That's, but I like them more than Neil. Yeah. That's um, and that's an indication of where this conversation might be going later. I've done my research. Um, who, um, who likes children or who would like children to have children? I don't mean to eat them, but to sort of you know look after them and stuff. Oh, that's nice. And then um, Grant tells me, Grant's my partner, by the way, he um, he told me I'm not supposed to ask this. And seeing as you're not a couple, I'm getting a bit confused. But who's top? <laughs> my little sister's watching this, though. It depends. All right, OK. Oops. OK. I, I do apologise. Um, OK, uh, you, uh, I'm in Cardiff, which is really nice. Um, and you're in Manchester, which is, is also very nice. Um Manchester making films and kind of thinking, why are you two not moved to London? Because everybody else seems to be moving to London. What's the um, what's the magic of Manchester? Well, I think in Manchester for us, we've got a really good filmmaking family and community here, and there's really, yeah. really, really brilliant like indie filmmaking community where people just help each other out. So you know, we've got like dozens of friends that and. Through working together, we've become friends, but we all like, you know, on weekends, we're like, what do you want to do? Let's make a film. And we get together and make a film. Whereas I feel like in London, it can be a little bit more kind of regimented to the process of making films. I don't think it's quite as spontaneous. And and I think that we we like to, I don't know, I think there's just a sort of community of people getting together and helping each other get their projects off the ground here that maybe there isn't so much in London. I know there is some of that in London, but in Manchester, I think especially, it's a really good network of people just helping each other out. I mean, we've, we've never made a film in London either, so um, it's hard to know how, how to... I suppose we, we our stories generally have a very strong northern voice as well, so um, so yeah, that, that comes into it as well a little yeah. bit, isn't it? We've made a film that was set in London that we filmed in Manchester, but with the, all the actors had a London accent and we just made it look like London. Um, so yeah, and also I imagine it's probably that like Lloyd said having a having a film making family around us, um, and I imagine it's probably cheaper as well to film up north. So yeah, because all quite... our family involved and they bring butties to the set. Do you know what I mean? And they bring cakes and stuff like that. So I don't know if you'd get that in London. And our crew expects a expect a butty and a cake now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm sure there'll be somebody shouting out for the benefits of shooting in London uh, before we finish. Um, Manchester Northern Stories. Um, let's start with with your story. Um, how did you actually meet um, as 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 well, I was going to say as, as a couple, but you're not a couple. So how did you get to meet as two boys in Manchester who I guess were interested in film at, at that time, or, or, or you know, tell us how you met. So I, I was doing a festival in Manchester, um, which I co-set up called Queer as Fringe, which was bringing together different um, LGBTQ theatre makers, writers, storytellers, uh, actors, directors, um, 
and we put on short plays. And Neil was actually acting in one of the plays. Um, <laughs> he calls it acting. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then you had a play idea, didn't you, that you wanted to put on um, and had written a script called Asylum of Grace, which then I ended up directing. And then from there, we started making indie movies together. So we did a couple of, of feature films on no money at all. So literally, we just got together people that we knew or seen about the community in Manchester and made these feature films that ended up getting released. And they were kind of our training wheels to kind of the shorts, I think, that we've done now in a way. Yeah. Because um, we didn't really know what we were doing. We were just like, we want to make a feature film, we're going to do it. And we did it. And, you know, it was mixed results, but we learned a lot from it. And I think it's made us stronger filmmakers but we've kind of grown as filmmakers together because we've had those experiences of making these films on no money at all and talking nothing yeah. um, and managing to get them released and then be like okay so what do we do next and we're like okay let's let's try and you know up, up the bar and make these short films which are of a higher quality i think it's easier to make a higher quality product as a short especially on a minimal budget um, no budget well yeah and then you know we kind of uh, and as you know, Berwin, we did go solo at one point and go head to head. Um, so you probably know that story quite well. Well, I I, I thought you weren't really going to bring mirrors up because um, you know I, I I know it's difficult for you <laughs> with, with 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 both films competing in the same year for Iris and um, but Neil, I have identified mirrors if I remember correctly as one of my favourite films. You did. Thank you very much. And I did remind. Yeah. Uh, he didn't believe me, but yeah. sure, I've heard this one before. <laughs> anyway, we did say we wouldn't um, go over old ground because I know it, it is difficult for you. Can I just, uh, I'm absolutely fascinated with the idea that you just went out there and made a feature film. Um, so I'm kind of thinking you bypassed film school and all of that stuff. You you just went out there and, and did it. And um, I think uh, you know there'll be a lot of um, young filmmakers and also people who might want to change career who who might uh, take a leaf from, from your book. Um, do you think it's still possible to do what you did then? And I, I'm assuming then was some years ago, um, or, or, has, or have things changed? I, would you advocate to anybody young now to do what, you've just, what you did? Absolutely, like, I think it's actually really important to, um, I will, uh, we, we recently made a, a short film, um, SAM, and we had a we had two days filming, and then we had a separate day where we just invited. We filmed in a um, in a, a well a council estate that I grew up in, Burnage. Um, and we filmed in the local park there, and we put it out there that anybody that was interested in filmmaking, any teenagers, any kids that wanted to come along and get involved, to come along. So we had a day where they all come along. They got to use the camera. They got to film some of the cutaways. They got to you know experience what it's like. I think it, it's really important to. So yeah, to definitely be like, if you want to do something, you can do it. Get out there. It's, it's actually I mean? more accessible to do now than it was when when I made my first feature, which was I don't know, I think it was like eight years ago. Because I think that the equipment now, you can get such high quality images from you know, even your iPhone. Yeah, and you can. You yeah. can I think it's more accessible to make films now than it was then. And you know, you, you can pick up a, a a reasonably good camera now for under a, you know a thousand pounds and and it and it will give you an image that, that is good that can you know get you into festival yeah. and even even rentals are cheaper now on those cameras that i shot my features on now they're, they're, i think you can rent them for like 20 quid a day you know so i think it's more accessible now just because technology is changing yeah and not, you know no 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 it, it's i i think there's um you know we're, we're to the wise there um obviously a thousand pounds is very expensive if you haven't got it but obviously you can borrow <laughs> and all of that stuff um cameras though for like there's a place in Manchester where you can rent really I mean I don't know what it's like all over the country but there is definitely places where you can access this equipment for relatively you know cheap yeah make a film out um, and I've seen some people doing it during lockdown and making these amazing films which look like yeah, phenomenal yeah. due to editing software more than anything and they've filmed yeah. it on the new iPhone George, George, yeah. Yeah. George yeah so there's yeah. people we know actors we've worked with are even doing it from home, and, and their stuff just looks phenomenal. Like it's amazing. Yeah. Listen. Um. Let Let's talk a little bit about closets. Um. Did you deliberately go out to find a way of making it not just a coming out story? Because I love coming out films. Because every decade, you know, every generation, there is a new, you know, I'm, I'm old, I'm 53, so my coming out story 
is very different to somebody coming out today, for example. But they are basically coming out stories. So did you did you deliberately try and find a way of splicing on sci-fi, um, upping the magic realism to make sure that it stood out as a slightly different coming out story? Do you want to guide us, walk us through how um, how the film came about? Yeah, so I, I wanted to tell a story that I would have wanted to watch in school growing up. Because when I was growing up in school, I didn't really know any gay people. Um, so I kind of, you know, merged one of my favourite genres, which was sci-fi, and kind of imagined, you know, that would have been really cool if I'd been growing up and someone had come through my closet and said, you know, you're not the only gay person. Because I, I just didn't know any gay people growing up. And and that's kind of where it came from. And then I started I started putting down the ideas to, to write it and put it together. And I was living back home with my mum at the time, and I went upstairs and I was like, I've got this idea for this short film, I think we should do it. And she was like, well, let's just do it. Let's, but let's, you know, let's ring up some companies and see if we can get a little bit of money behind it. So she spent, you know, hours on the phone to people, ringing them up different companies who, you know, invested in the story and, and came forward and, and put finance into it. And, and we made it and it happened quite quickly, really. Um, and, you know, there was, I was working with someone at the time who just made a, a concept film and she'd worked with an amazing DOP and she was like, just ask him if he'll do it. And he'd been shooting for stuff like Cold Feet and TV dramas. Mm. And I just messaged him and he emailed back and said, let's meet in Costa Coffee. And then, you know, he was on board. So <laughs> what I was kind of saying about the Manchester community, it was, it's really nice because I feel like everyone's quite approachable and reachable um, to get involved in projects. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and then it kind of came from that really. I never really, I didn't, I didn't compare it to other LGBTQ films. I wasn't really conscious of it kind of fitting into or changing with the coming out story because I just kind of thought about what I hadn't seen as a gay guy growing up and what I thought might be, you know, a good film for youth audiences. Because I feel like there aren't there aren't loads of films that are accessible to LGBT youth. Um, I think there's more of them coming out, but I think that that you know there was definitely a gap when I made this where there weren't as many that were yeah. accessible. <clears throat> School, for example, which I know that you guys at Iris now do show it in schools, which is fantastic, and mm. that's kind of where my head was at when I was making it. So to be able to achieve that for you was was phenomenal for me, really. Yeah, we've got some questions coming in. One of them you've actually answered, Carl. Uh, Lockdown Lunatics um, said, "Well done on the film, Lloyd and Neil. Love the film. What inspired you to make this film? I think you've already answered that. So thanks, Carl, for your question." Um, uh, 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 this is a really interesting, way better question than the ones I've got. Um, Matt asks, um, how would this film be different if it was made this year? Ooh. Ooh. Do you want to think about that one? Because that's, that's a really good question, but I'm kind of, I'm thinking, wow. Well, I think the one of the differences uh, which we've discussed, uh, maybe taking it forward, is that I think we would... Um, I think in the, the past couple of years, the character that's set in 2016 at the time, I think we would make them a, a character that um, isn't necessarily struggling as much to show that, that time has changed. Um, but struggling in a different way. I think we were kind of, we were going yeah. we to push more upon, upon like the toxic masculinity and that kind of pressures in society that are kind of stopping some people from coming out and focusing more on that and having a contrasting parent just to <laughs> make it more interesting, I think. Because obviously his, his, his mum's really supportive today, but I think it'd be quite interesting, you know, if we made that character a dad and had it kind of a toxic masculinity standpoint. Just and may, and maybe not necessarily have him as that he, he's um, struggling being gay, but he, he fits into the, the kind of the... the um, like the spectrum of uh, I'm, I don't have to put myself in a box, do you know what I mean? I shouldn't have to label myself as to, to, to conform, to fit into society. Mm. That's it, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Rick, um, Rick's asked a few questions, um, which we'll come to when we discuss something else in a minute. But, um, but Rick also wants to say, great film, loved every aspect of it, and I can't wait to see more from them. Um, and obviously, we'll talk a little bit more about more from you later on. Um, at what point did did you realise that closets closets was really popular? Was there a moment? Was there something that happened where you kind of went, or did you know it was going to be fabulous from the beginning? <laughs> no, not at all. I, I was hoping it. I was hoping it would be terrible, so I could the Irish prize with me. 
I think I think I, I think my, my confidence with it massively grew from winning Best of British and the Youth Award at Iris because you know it it was it, I didn't expect it at all like at all and I think for me you know winning the Youth Award as well was just what I what I set out to do to was to get this in school two awards, two awards. <laughs> and then also yeah and I think you know it it was it, it, I was just overwhelmed that it had that reception because I mean Iris was one of the first festivals really that it and it sparked a lot of other festivals afterwards it kind of opened the doors for me as a filmmaker Iris because then suddenly all these other festivals some which I'd already entered actually and hadn't got in then came back and wanted it the year after and it kind of grew from that and it was amazing and then you know the popularity then through Peccadillo Pictures releasing it on DVD you know getting that exposure and people seeing it and young people seeing it and emailing me it just it was you know I still get messages now about it and it and it's just it's just fantastic. It feels great because it's just yeah. you know, I, I need it to try and you know help some young people who might be struggling, and I think it has in a way, you know. And I think that extended massively um, when we took it further and made it into a musical. When we had a lot of youth coming down from all across the country to watch it, and it was just yeah, it was just wonderful, really. Well, you've just reminded me there of the my, the, the next section. Um, it's almost as if we prepared this, isn't it? Some really good questions from Tim as well, which I'm going to leave until we do start talking about um, the musical, but obviously um, confidence in its success kind of allowed you somehow to think the next obvious thing to do was to make Closets, the short film, into Closets, the musical. Uh, um, before we talk about it, um, let's have a little reminder of uh, uh, the, the the fantastic uh, Closets, the musical, which um, played for about two weeks in Manchester. Yeah. yeah. Don't wake me, don't wake me, don't wake me if I'm dreaming. Don't wake me, don't wake me, don't wake me if I'm dreaming. Don't wake me, don't wake me, don't wake me if I'm dreaming. There's no easy way out. You've got to stand tall. And fight from inside Before you crumble and fall You've unlocked my inner soul I got it so electric Let's forget, let's lose control Wow, it's uh, it, it's like being back in Manchester. Where, where where did I see it? What was the name of that amazing arts venue? Oh, Hope Mill Theatre. Yeah, oh. it, it's incredible. incredible. It's, and it's a beacon for fresh musicals, which is fantastic. You know, they they put on so many original musicals there and give so many people the opportunities to create new work. It's, yeah. Well, yeah. So, I hope they. I hope. I hope they're going to survive this awful situation. Of course, yeah. lots of spaces like this in 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 a terrible situation at the moment. Um, I said I remember. I think there were twenty plus of us uh, in a bus or various cars travelling up from Cardiff. And as you already said, the one thing I remember about the musical was young people. The place was full of young people, and um, and I know a lot of film festivals, a lot of theatre productions um, would would die to have that kind of youth audience. Um, Confidence as filmmakers, I, I can get that. But how did you, <laughs> why did you think suddenly that you could just ta-da, create this musical out of this short film? Are you, are you unbelievably talented or do you just step in and say, oh, let's have a go? I mean, we basically, yeah, they're like, we stepped in and went like, I mean, we... we we'd done, we'd, we'd done theatre before, but on a much um, smaller scale. 
Um, I don't think we anticipated how much work goes into putting on a musical, to be honest. I think we were massively, like, once it started, we were like, oh, my God, this is actually insane, like, the amount of different stuff that... But, again, we learn absolutely loads of stuff from doing it. I mean, a lot, majority of the cast have done musicals before, and, you know, and taught us a lot. Um, again, it was like a family. We kind of, all the cast that we worked with, really pulled it together. Um, and, and, and yeah, we got it together. And you know, yeah. we were lucky enough to have an amazing composer on it, Ashley Walsh. And you know, we had a brilliant cast. We had a brilliant choreographer, uh, William Wheat at Welton, and it just it kind of came together just through teamwork and just put you know putting in no sleep for a month. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, with, with um, let's talk a little bit about how you adapt the short into a musical. Because uh, obviously the musical is slightly longer to begin with. Obviously, uh, there's lots of so- singing and stuff, which I believe is quite common in musicals. Um, I think I'm the only gay man who doesn't do musicals, but there we are. Um, the uh, Did you kind of dissect all of the stories, all the characters? And did you kind of decide, oh, I think let the arc of this one, let's give them a little bit more, a um, little bit less... And, uh, and in particular, you know, I'm looking at the difference with time. Um, if we could kind of bring in a, a, a really interesting question from Tim, which kind of links into, uh, in, a, in a roundabout way, into expanding the short into a feature. Um, you, 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 you know, you highlight HIV in 2016 and then 86. But even in 2016, it's a bit of an issue with uh, Julia's character, Julia, character Penny. Um, yeah, did... did did that feature in, in turning it into a musical? You know, did you take certain elements, expand them, and why? Did you just walk us through that process? I mean, I think I think the the sexual transmitted disease things came from a, a, a worry that I, you know, that I think and it, a lot of people experience from their mums when they come out. From and I think they're from obviously a different generation where they where they instantly go, oh my god, what about H- What about all this stuff that I've seen before? And they, they're not particularly educated on it either. I think so. I think there's that kind of overprotective worriness that comes out in a lot of parents when people come out as gay. And I know it still happens now because I speak to people that they're like, my mum was like that when, you know what I mean? So it kind of came from that and this kind of almost like innocent, uneducated kind of way of, you know, where HIV is now because it's completely manageable. You know, it's more manageable than diabetes completely, you know. Um, and But I think a lot of a generation of parents who don't, obviously research into it don't know you know and I think that's something that comes out so I wanted to put that across just because of its experiences that I've heard come from people um and then we had a song in the musical called Protection which was a sexual transmitted disease song that the mum sings and she dances around singing about all the different STDs and, yeah and um you know we, and, it's, and it's kind of a comedic song because you're kind of laughing at how over the top she is with it and almost how sort of ridiculous and uneducated she is on it herself and it becomes kind of a comedy song in it. Hi George. So yeah, is there as a would you say as creatives um that you had more freedom in a strange way with the musical that you could literally just go for it. You know, you can have a mother singing yeah. a song about STDs, whereas in the film it, it it's slightly you know, you, you were trying to maybe achieve something slightly different. Well, we kind of, we'd, we'd sat down originally, Lloyd, had, I was living um, near Brighton at the time, and Lloyd had come down and seen me for the week, and we were working on the feature film version of Closets, and we'd kind of just finished it, and Lloyd had previously written a um, a, a, a musical for stage, what was it called? Shades of Diva. Shades of Diva. And we was a bit drunk, because we just finished the script, we was, you know, let's have a drink, do you know what I mean, let's put the music on. And then in that, we were just like, why don't we turn closets into a musical after just finishing a feature film script? And then literally we just started work on it the next day and we started like working out how we could change it into a stage play, how we could put songs into it. And yeah, and I think that's where um, um, Florrie was born, wasn't she? So we took it to Stonewall. So the boys in the the, the mm-hmm. musical go traveling to, to Stonewall. Um, yeah, which was played by Kim Tatum, who's Amazing, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, yeah, so it expands into like a kind of Doctor Who universe, doesn't it? Yeah. So they kind of go off everywhere in the stage play, and then it comes it comes back to kind of the film in the sense that they've still got that kind of coming out to each of their parents, but in the middle of it, they go on a journey together and help each other kind of get to the point where they're ready to come out. So I think basically it was being drunk. 
actually. <laughs> like getting drunk and having a bit of Spice Girl music on in the background was a bit like, hey, we should turn it into a musical. And uh, yeah. we Right. Well, the, the musical was was clearly a huge success, and you know I'm always because I'm a big film fan, you know, not a big secret, um, and I'm always fascinated when I see a piece of theatre, whether it's musical theatre, whatever it is, and you can actually disappear into another world where you can see everything in front of you, whereas film can take you to other places, and there's lots of gimmicks and there's lots of things, and uh, and the musical was very different. There's a few questions here that have come in. And I'm not quite sure if they're relevant to the musical or to the film, but they're, they're, they're still they're still good. I think you might have answered some of them, but Richard wants to know if the story is fictional, and in particular, how did you draw on your own life experiences? I think you might have answered that at the beginning. Yeah, just kind of you know, it's it. I I struggled in school with my sexuality just because I didn't know anyone else that was gay. So I mean, it's you know, it's not obviously. It is fictional in the sense that with time travel, I didn't time travel, but I was, <laughs> so it's kind of brought from my own experiences and my kind of one of my favourite genres. Like kind of yeah. Passionate, but, you know. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's elements that um, that you could look at. I mean, me and Lloyd have got. I know people won't believe this, but there's nearly ten years between us. Um, so there's a there's a gap between us in the sense of when we was writing it before we um, I I grew up in a different generation than Lloyd. So, so yeah, so there's elements taken from yeah. experiences that we've had, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Am, I supposed to, am I supposed to respond to that, the um, 10 years difference? Is that a joke? There is, there is nearly 10 years. There is nearly 10 years. Oh, wow. Like 10 years older than me. <laughs> oh, there we are. Um, um, George wants to know... Um, Hello, George. What's, uh, what's the message behind Closet, if there's a, a, a general message... I know you've given lots of detail, but is that a general message? Is it hope? Is it, you know, stick to your guns? That's a really good question. Um, I think, I think the... It, the, it gets better as one of them, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Doing it, that yeah. Kind of there is a, you know, at the end of it, you will be okay and it, and it will get better throughout time. And that's kind of what the whole thread of the time travel is. It's showing that it will get better and things change. Still, things need to change and time will, will mend that as well. But time is is a healer and things will get better. That's kind of one of the main messages. But also within the musical as well, it's about not forgetting the past, do you know what I mean? And not forgetting the fight that we, we've, we've, we've had to go through to get here. Um, do you know what I mean? And it's also, you know, we're very lucky to live in a, a country where we can be free, whereas, you know, in, in probably, what, 70, 80 countries around the world, they don't have that privilege to be able to hold hands walking down the street. Yeah. And, and not be attacked for it, or go to a gay bar and, and dance around to Madonna. Um, Lynn has been in touch. She says she loves the film. We've got a fan there. Uh, and for different reasons, feels very much in the moment for her, which is interesting. Um, also, a question about the music, saying the music was perfect. And what was the relationship between the opening track and the film? Were, were, were you aware of the piece of music when you were thinking of the opening sequence, because it's so, such a strong. Oh, the music. Oh, the music. The, the musical. No, the short film. No, the music on the film when he's dancing on the bed. The opening sequence. Yeah, so I, I wanted to find something really like iconically eighties that would feel eighties, but obviously I couldn't use like a a real track. Um, so yes, yeah, so I searched and searched and searched. It took a long time, and I found something that I felt really like you'd listen to it instantly. It was like this is the era. And um, you know, found an artist that was up for, for me using it basically, and, and yeah, and I, and I think it fits perfectly for me. It, that feels very eighties. It almost feels a little bit. I don't know. It kind of rings back to some of my favourite eighties films, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and I kind of wanted that kind of feel of someone in the bedroom being free and just dancing and just being themselves. And yeah, so that's kind of where that came from. Yeah, Hannah has been in touch. Um, oh wow, she thinks both of you are amazing. I don't know why she thinks that, but never mind. Um, she wants to know how do your childhoods differ? I think um, Neil, you alluded to being, you know, ten years younger, older, whatever. Um, how did your, uh, your childhoods differ? She wants to know. Um, that's, that's quite personal, isn't it? It's quite deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think, generally, then maybe just generally. I think, oh, sure, I think uh, that's a really good question. But I think in some ways our childhoods uh, are very similar in the sense of we both. Um, 
we both had to to um, I'm trying to think of the words. We both we both had a lot to overcome throughout our childhood. Um, I think they differ in the sense of um, we're from very different um, backgrounds. I'm from a probably much more um, lower working class background, and Lloyd's from a, a, a middle class background. But we both. I think when we met each other, like um, our connection was that we'd both had um, a struggle while we were young, um, not just to do with sexuality, but to do with other things that... that um, You'll have to watch a different film to find yeah, out. There's a different yeah. film. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say they don't differ that much, just maybe that I'm from from one side of the park and Lloyd from the other. Like, he's from the posh house and I'm from the council yeah. estate. So, <laughs> and which I think most people kind of figure out quite quickly when they meet us. Um, yeah. Well, that's, it's, can I just say it's news to me. Um, <laughs> Jack the Lad magazine, or Jack the Lad mag, and Jack Pauline, Pauline a similar question, really. They um, Do you have any, or two questions, really. Do you have any plans to return to close this to the musical because I, I I I also agree that so many more people need to see it. That's number one. And Pauline wants to know: Do you want to do another musical? Well, I think you should uh, get more people to see Closet to the Musical first, then do another one. Closet, what are, what are your plans? The closet door isn't closed. It's always open. The closet door is <laughs> open, um, and yeah, hopefully we'll be able to talk about that. Um, maybe later to one yeah i mean we're just we're just kind of toying with development and you know working out i think we're, we're working out on how to as we said before update it so it's more of a because it does need updating because because it's a time travel story i think you know to bring it back we do need to make adjustments to it we need to work out stuff to do with the story arc and the book and you know and, and we're working on that aren't we and we'll let you know towards the end of the year yeah. lovely lovely um Richard and Rashid, two two different questions here, really good ones. Oh, Rashid, wait, I think. I'm going to do a music, another music. <laughs> Rash, Rashid, I think, is feeling sorry for Neil because obviously um, we we've been talking about uh, closets, but but Rashid is interested to know: Do you think your directing styles are similar, or are they really different? A difficult one for the audience, obviously, because we haven't seen mirrors today, but that might give them a, a hint. Do you want to tell us? Um, I think that I think they definitely. Um, I think I probably I, I started off as a writer, and my first working relationship with with Lloyd was that I'd written a script, and I gave it to Lloyd, and Lloyd directed it. So I suppose I learned a lot from from Lloyd's directing style, and then we went solo and did our solo projects. And yeah, but um, we kind yeah, of, I think we kind of, I think definitely, Lloyd's definitely more the director than, than, than what I am. But that's um, not true. I think, I think that we've got different styles in the sense of, you know, I think you've taught me a lot and I've taught you a lot because I've definitely started improvise, improvising more since I've met Neil and working with actors in that sense, which I've loved doing and it's something that we've explored a lot more in our new short film together um so i think we complement each other i think we bring different things that then make a product at the end of it that's that i think works really well yeah definitely yeah so, do you, so is it fair to say you are a partnership then that that works really well oh yeah, absolutely definitely. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't think we're, we're never going to split up again there's no there's no solo single coming out <laughs> <laughs> okay. well that's that's more good news during this period of not good news um we're, we're sort of coming to uh, the end, I think. So I'm going to try and close, but there's plenty more to, to ask about what ne what's next. Um, I'm, I'm just very impressed with all the questions coming in because they're better than the ones I had. Um, Richard um, uh, wants to know, do you think drama can handle difficult subjects like this, like closets, better than, say, documentary? It's a good one, isn't it? You, you should ask a documentary filmmaker, really, and they'd have a different answer. But anyway, uh, um, what, 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 what's your opinion? I, 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 I generally appreciate both. Um, I think it's different for different people. I know that I used to like to escape through drama and watching, you know, escaping into a different world and the way that I could see it. So it was, it was you know, you could see stuff play out differently than you would in a documentary and, and you know... I don't know, I used to, I mean, I used to secretly watch like Queer as Folk in my bedroom and like be like, oh my God, like this is a whole new world. And 
and you know the characters you get to know the characters in a different way than i think you would in a documentary relationship and i think it's just a different way of watching it isn't it and it's down to different experiences of, like, yeah i think they both yeah. equally have the, the the it depends how they've done doesn't it you know yeah yeah and then pauline oh it's really nice pauline says um, i think they complement each other's strengths and weaknesses and oh, that is a real you know, lovely that's a real partnership oh and um can we all say hello to Roger? Uh, he's watching us from Houston, okay. Texas. Um, we're going to move on to what's next, because I, I know what's next. I've actually seen it. And, um, yeah, um, there's something very special on the way. Um, Jamie's asked a question, which I think is relevant to the next section. Um, you know, what stories are you drawn to tell next, is his question. Um, and also, there's like a secondary question, how... Do you think being based in the North Manchester specifically has influenced your storytelling? So I'm kind of thinking, is this the time to talk about a very special film called Sam? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sam. I mean, it, I, I'd, I'd worked um, teaching drama um, to, to young adults with learning disabilities for, well, on and off for probably about 10, 15 years. Um, so for me, it's a you know it, it's something that I love and it's something that I've always felt that I could never particularly move away from. Um, and to be able to get to make to take my two passions and fuse them together um, was just like absolutely brilliant. So we did we, so, we did a, a workshop together with with um, young people with learning disabilities, asking them what they felt wasn't represented on screen, what they felt wasn't visible with you know regarding young people with learning disabilities, and you know a lot of them said that that sexuality, they'd never seen it be addressed and it was something that they wanted to see, which is kind of where um, SAM came from. came from because we we then, you know, thought about how we could tell the story of, a, of you know, of two, two, young, two, two young lads meeting each other and, you know, forming a friendship and then how society views, um, views those those young two, two lads, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and they're from the... You know, there's, there's layers to it where it's they're both from very different backgrounds. They're they're both um, they you know it would appear like when you get to watch the film that they don't have much in common yet yet they end up together. Yeah. And it's about acceptance and love. And we were really like it's probably I'd say out of all of the things that we've done, it's probably by far it was the most enjoyable yeah experience to make yeah. because of the people we got to work with and also I'm definitely it, like one of the most proud of films we made yeah because I, th I think it, it touches upon something that isn't explored and we I think we've told a story that that you know needs to be told that isn't really being told still and that's why you know when we were in that room talking to these young adults they were like you know this, this, people were so scared to talk about it and we're hoping that people will watch the film and then start having conversations that I think people are just scared to have, you know, because we've got, you know, a young lad with a learning disability who falls in love with another lad on the swings, and, and you know, and that that's beautiful, but people are scared yeah. about it, and I think, you know, we want to try and get people talking from it, don't we? Yeah. yeah. And obviously, you know, it should have had its premiere at Flair um, earlier this year, and unfortunately we all know what happened there. Um, it must be very frustrating knowing you've got this important story to share and at the moment it's not happening um have you any idea of of this is a stupid question does anybody know what's happening but um i i'm i'm, I'm assuming you're optimistic that um reasonably soon the film will start appearing at festivals all over the world yeah i mean we've, we've had a lot we had we had like we the film was kind of put out there as a trailer and we had a lot of people get in contact with us and discuss the film that was featured like amazingly the ITV News got involved and you know we featured there and it was brilliant to get into the BF5 but I think at the time it was you know for everybody it was more about you know keeping people safe and I think that as much as we were all a little bit gutted that we couldn't go to the BF5 at the time it was just like everybody needs just to be safe um, but yeah I mean I'm hoping that that once we get back on track, that you know people will get to see the film because, like we said, we're very, we're really proud of it, and the the people that was involved with the film were amazing. You know, that I mentioned earlier, we had people from like Burnage, the council, and from Come Along and help out with the film. We had Mencap involved. 
we had people with learning disabilities come along and get to use the camera and that so and and also people that will come into the park we we didn't have the finances to be able to shut the park off so we even had people that were coming in the park and was like if you want to get involved get involved and yeah. they in extras and do you know what I mean? Like the cafe in the park ended up making us yeah. cups of tea. So it, I think out of all the projects we've done, it was a project that that actually becomes something so much more behind the camera. Um, so yeah, so well, we're, we're we we fun. yeah we we definitely want to see it in a cinema though, and for everyone yeah, involved yeah. as well to get people to watch and see the the work because you know no one's seen it on the big screen yet. So it's yeah we're we're fingers crossed. And year. also, we don't. We've not seen it where people are like, "Oh, we love it." Do you know what I mean? Or we don't. We don't like it. Because of this, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it must be. It must be quite nerve wracking waiting. But um, yeah. all I could t- all I could tell you is that hundreds, there are thousands of filmmakers uh, in a similar position. So let's hope oh, there is some good news fairly soon. Um, another message from the United States of America. AP sends cheers. And um, oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, if if you're thinking about an, uh, your next project, are you aware of any stories of those who came out later in life? Um, yeah. So I, something to think about. I, I, does, I am does, aware, does, yeah. does she mean stories of people in life, or stories that are told on screen, or is it? Uh, no, I just I I think they're thinking. I, I'm assuming that AP um, thinks you know. We need to see maybe a few stories, a few films where the person comes out is 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 much older. Oh yeah, obviously, okay. you know, closets <laughs> is uh, you know. Actually, going back to the other question as well, there's a really good documentary on Netflix at the moment about two two women yeah. um, that come out later in life. It's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful. Uh, well, the, the, um, I'm sure she um, she's from Wales that she's made, and it's got Bridget, one of our neighbours, in it, and it's yeah. called Time and that's oh my god, what's it called? Do you know which one I mean, Berwyn? It's too old. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, there's. I think what's interesting to answer AP's um, sort of question is um, we've seen a huge increase um, in the number of stories um, depicting you know getting older. Um, and what that entails, and you know, and it's not all doom and gloom about no. bereavements and ailments and and all of that stuff. Um, but anyway, well, time is running out. It's not running out actually. I'm just I, I, there's a bottle of wine with my name on it, <laughs> and um, and there's also a prawn curry um, I can smell in the kitchen. But um, just sort of to finish off, um, any secrets about the way you've coped with COVID nineteen? You've um, have you been working, both of you? Have you been um, helping out? Have you been We've quarantined been and all of that stuff? Take us through the last what nine nine weeks, ten weeks. Uh, we've written, I'd say we've we've written a few scripts, haven't we? Yeah. Um, we've just started writing our new short, which we're hoping to film as soon as we can, kind of get um, lockdown lifted, because um, we want to just get back out with the camera and make a film. Um, so yes, we've we've started writing a new short. We've been putting together treatments, packs, film. But we've just been kind of trying to set together tasks to do every week that are creative, and I've just you know kept sending them, kept sending them out. And um, I've I've been work, I've been working, I've been at Mencat. Yeah, I've been at Mencat. And yeah, we've been we've been you know that we're very grateful to be able to live in an area where we've got a beautiful countryside outside and. You know, we've we've got a WhatsApp group where we help the neighbours out and that, and you know, um, yeah. So yeah, just staying creative, really, staying yeah. creative and trying to, you know, if you're going to the shop, putting in the WhatsApp group, do you want, do you need milk or do you need bread yeah. or do you need uh, a, a tub of lube or whatever? Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I think also it's it's good. If you, I know I know a lot of people are having friends ring them up, and like the producer we work with, not Green, she's got a friend that rings her and sets her. She tells her her list that she's got to do every day and she tells her her list and they bring up and check on each other in the day and see if you complete the list and go through it. Like, you know, even if it's like bouncing on your trampoline outside, just like make sure you're doing all the stuff that you you want to do that day. Yeah. It's very easy not to. I think. And getting outside as well. And you know, I think, I think you know, there's positive things that have come from. Yeah. From, from, I think there's lots of negative, but there's positive things that pe- people are going outside and exploring and going bike riding and, and helping, you know, neighbors. helping each other. Yeah, the community is, here has come together massively since yeah, this. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think, and I think that's been replicated across the, the UK, um, which which is probably a, a good note to 
conclude. Um, I'd like to say I enjoyed that. No, me too. <laughs> uh, but I did. I actually did. Um, so, thanks to both of you. No, that was really, really nice. Thanks for sharing some of your Thursday nights oh, with no, us. Um, uh, I'd also like to thank um, Amelia, who is behind the scenes, and she's been guiding us through. And she's a really good example of of having tests and practicing. And um, yeah, and thank you very much to Peccadillo Pictures. And of course, this year is their 20th anniversary. Tom Colon doing amazing stuff. Um, my name is Berwin Rowlands, and um, it was a pleasure being part of the Peccadillo. Um, uh, and Mirrors is also available on, on Boys on Film. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Neil the last word. Good night. Enjoy. Bye. Be safe. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>